To find the sine, cosine, and tangent of angles between 0 and 90 degrees, you can use right triangles like this one here. Before we dive into this lesson, why don't you first use this triangle to find the cosine of 50 degrees? You can drag this corner of the triangle up here to make any right triangle you want. And once you have your answer, round it to two decimal places and type it into this box over here. Remember, you can use the calculator down here to convert fractions to decimals. And if you'd like to review what the cosine of an angle is instead, then click down here. Nicely done. And what's the sine of 50 degrees? Again, nicely done. But how can we evaluate something like the sine of 230 degrees? With right triangles like this one, we can only evaluate trig functions for angles between 0 degrees and 90 degrees. We'll need a new way of thinking about sine, cosine, and tangent that extends beyond right triangles. To look at larger angles, let's first draw in some x and y axes. And let's also draw in a circle. Now the center of this circle is the origin, meaning the point 0, 0. Let's say the radius of this circle is 1. So this is the point 1, 0. And the circle also passes through the points 0, 1, negative 1, 0, and 0, negative 1. This circle, centered at the origin and with radius 1, is called the unit circle. And we'll be using it to define the sine, cosine, and tangent of any angle. Now with the unit circle, we define angles as being counterclockwise from the positive x-axis. Just so you know, rotating this way, like the way a clock goes, is clockwise. Going the other way, like this, is counterclockwise. So take a look at these four points here on the circumference of the unit circle. Which of these points represents a 50 degree angle? In other words, which one is 50 degrees counterclockwise from the positive x-axis? Well done! This point up here is at 50 degrees, meaning it makes a 50 degree angle with the positive x-axis in the counterclockwise direction. Let's just draw a line from this point down to the x-axis so that we have a right triangle over here. Now, what's the x-coordinate of this point? In other words, what's the length of this horizontal leg of our right triangle? Remember, this angle is 50 degrees, and the hypotenuse of our right triangle is the radius of the unit circle, which we said has length 1. If you get stuck, click over here to review how to find the length of a right triangle's legs using trig functions. Nicely done. The hypotenuse of this right triangle is 1. So the length of this side down here is the cosine of 50 degrees, which is approximately equal to 0 0.643. So that's the x-coordinate of this point up here. It's a distance of about 0 0.643 from the y-axis. Now what's the y-coordinate of this point up here? In other words, what's the length of this right triangle's vertical leg? Right. The y-coordinate of this point is the sine of 50 degrees, which is about 0 0.766. So this is how we'll be defining the sine and cosine functions from now on. For any angle, like 50 degrees, travel counterclockwise around the unit circle by that angle. The x-coordinate of that point will be the cosine of that angle, and the y-coordinate of that point will be the sine of the angle. Let's try out another angle. This angle over here is 20 degrees, and so this point is 20 degrees counterclockwise from the positive x-axis. So without using a calculator, try using this point on the unit circle to approximate the sine of 20 degrees. In other words, estimate this point's y-coordinate. To help you out, let's add some tick marks where the separation between these marks is 0.1. Excellent work! The length of this vertical line segment is our point's y-coordinate and represents the sine of 20 degrees. So it looks like the sine of 20 degrees is about 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.3, so it seems to be between 0 0.3 and 0 0.4. And not that you were asked this question, but the length of this horizontal line segment is our point's x-coordinate and represents the cosine of 20 degrees, which looks like it's a little over 0 0.9. 
Now it's time to venture beyond 90 degrees. Here's an angle of 150 degrees, counterclockwise from the positive x-axis. Use the x or y coordinates of this point on the unit circle over here to approximate the cosine of 150 degrees. And feel free to ask for a hint if you need one. OK, you're on a roll. The cosine of 150 degrees is the x-coordinate of this point, and because it's left of the y-axis, that means the cosine of 150 degrees is negative. It looks like it's between negative 0.8 and negative 0.9. Meanwhile, the sine of 150 degrees is positive because this point has a positive y-coordinate. Now let's look at another, even bigger angle. This angle here is 250 degrees from the positive x-axis. Try using this point on the unit circle to approximate both the cosine and sine of 250 degrees. Nicely done. So the cosine of 250 degrees turns out to be approximately negative 0.342, while the sine of 250 degrees is approximately negative 0.940. Try putting these two facts together to approximate the tangent of 250 degrees. If you're not sure how to do this, click up here instead. Now with this interactive graph, you can see the sine, cosine, and tangent of all angles between 0 and 360 degrees by dragging this point around the circumference of the unit circle. Try finding an angle whose sine and tangent are negative and whose cosine is positive. Once you have one, type it in over here. Nicely done. Yeah, in this quadrant down here, points on the unit circle have positive x-coordinates and negative y-coordinates. So the cosine of any angle down here is positive, while the sine and tangent are negative. OK, here's your next challenge. Try finding the angles where the sine and cosine are equal to each other. And here's a hint, there are exactly two such angles. Right, at 45 degrees and at 225 degrees, the sine and cosine functions are equal to each other. OK, it's time for your final challenge. For which angles are the sine and cosine functions negatives of each other? In other words, where do the sine and cosine functions have the same magnitude, but one is positive while the other is negative? Again, there are exactly two such angles.